Hi, my name is Nicole Marples and I'm the Executive Director with Langley Environmental Partner Society. Langley Environmental Partner Society, or LAPS, is a nonprofit charitable organization. We were formed in 1993 with the mission of protecting and restoring the natural environment through education, cooperation, and action. So, a watershed is an area of land. It's um, denoted by the highest elevation or the rise of the land and flows down into the lowest elevation. So everywhere you go, everywhere in the world, you are in a watershed. A watershed isn't a place that's sort of out there or one specific area. The whole world is a watershed that collects the water that falls with precipitation and drains it into a river. Um, the amount of trees versus the amount of pavement in a watershed impacts on the health of the river. The amount of um, you know, buildings and built up areas versus natural areas that will allow for infiltration. The land use practices that are happening, how much commercial, how much agricultural, how many parks, how much um, residential areas, all have an impact on the health of the river. Langley, we have a lot of farms and a lot of those farms have manure. So proper management and best management practice handling of manure on farms is one of the most important things in agriculture that um, can help to save our streams. So what kind of fish would we expect to find in a creek like this? Okay, so um, in Bertrand Creek specifically, we have uh, populations of coho salmon. Um, the adults come um, up from the south, they come into the stream, they lay their eggs, and, um, and then the juvenile salmon uh, rear and then head down south again. So there's a direct connection with the health of the populations of the salmon in the Salish Sea with Bertrand Creek or any other salmon bearing stream in the Langley area. Uh, the only salmon species we do not have in Langley are sockeye salmon and we don't have sockeye salmon because they like to, fed, uh, to spawn in glacier fed lakes. We don't have large mountains um, that are melting um, glacier water into our streams. Our streams are primarily filled with rain water and so so we get um, the sockeye salmon more on the north side of the Fraser River and in those watersheds, that's one of the only species that we don't have here. Um, however, here in Langley, um, there are um, three watersheds that, or four watersheds, sorry, there's four watersheds that are um, habitat for um, one of Canada's most endangered aquatic species, and that's the Salish Sucker and the Nooksack Dace. And the Salish Sucker and the Nooksack Dace are only found in a handful of watersheds in all of the world. All of those are in BC and four of those are in Langley. There's also some found in some Chilliwack watersheds and in some Burnaby watersheds. Okay, so the riparian zone is the area of trees and plants that grow directly adjacent to the stream. Um, a riparian zone is extremely important in um, creating a buffer between the land uses um, beside the stream and the stream itself. So the riparian zone, um, the roots of the plants act like a basket. They sort of grow together and shore up the, um, the soils there to make sure that you're not getting erosion. It helps in the stability of the banks of the stream so that you're not getting um, active slumping and erosion. Um, the, the trees grow up and they act as a canopy to create shade. Um, salmon usually like it to be less than um, 15 degrees in the water and so the higher the water temperatures get, the less oxygen is in the water and the harder it becomes for those salmon to survive. So having a nice wide riparian zone with lots and lots of trees and shrubs that are shading the water is going to make it much healthier for the salmon itself. Here we're looking out here we have a lot of reed canary grass and that reed canary grass is um, is a grass that has been introduced into the area it does extremely well in the aquatic zone it can grow its roots like a mat it can grow in up to four meters of water and um, it can create um, a bit of an obstruction for very small fish that are trying to um, swim through the in, through the stream ecosystem so um, the, the wider your riparian zone and the more diverse your riparian zone is, the healthier the stream is in the long run. So as um, development happens in Langley and more houses move in and they um, put in more roads and that type of thing, they put in um, storm drains and that's part of the um, stormwater management system. If the rain falls and it falls on pavement, it's going to flood things unless it has a place to go. So those storm drains um, provide a conduit to move the water away from our neighborhoods, but they provide a direct link between the street and the stream. So mm. when it rains, 
and the rain falls on the pavement, that pavement is actually, or that rain is actually picking up all those little dribs and drabs of maybe someone has a drip of oil, somebody's maybe used some chemical fertilizer on their lawn, sprayed little pesticides, used a little rust remover on their driveway, and all those little bits get picked up by the rain and they get flushed into the storm drain, which then goes directly into the stream without being filtered. And that is called non-point source pollution. This is a part of the stormwater management um, that was put in for the residential development. So the water that goes through the storm drains here goes into a detention pond and that detention pond then gets filled with water when it's very, very rainy. And then that water can slowly infiltrate down to the stream instead of um, being what's called flashy where you get a huge flash of water that goes through the storm drain into the creek that has um, more potential for scouring and creating erosion and washing away um, you know, eggs of, of salmon that might be in the, in the stream. And this allows it to, again, infiltrate down and slowly filter its way. So all this is pretty fascinating. What I kind of wonder is, who's funding LAPS? Right now, our funders are the Township of Langley, the City of Langley, the Vancouver Foundation, Envision Financial, um, the Habitat Stewardship Program, the Pacific Salmon Foundation. Um, and so each one of these funders is funding specific projects that run under LEPS and help to um, support the work that we're doing in the community. So a lot of the work that we try to do is engaging the community in the work that we do. So it's not just us doing it, it's us bringing the community in. And so um, looking for opportunities to bring volunteers in, to get people involved in protecting and restoring the natural environment through education, cooperation and action. What I always wonder about conversations like this is educationally, what's your background and how did you get to do what it is you're doing? When I got out of high school, I needed to find something to, um, to do. And so I went to hairdressing school. I went to beauty school. <laughs> and um, I worked in that for a few years and the place that I worked for burnt down and I lost all of my supplies and I wasn't insured. And so I needed to find something else to do. And at the time there was a provincial government initiative called the BC Environmental Youth Team. And it um, provided a minimum wage job to get people, um, to get youth uh, 16 to 30 years old into uh, the environmental field. And so I planted trees and I cleaned up streams and I was introduced to lots of great volunteers in the community who were passionate about stream keeping and uh, and that sort of led me to doing stream mapping which led me to Langley Environmental Partner Society and the rest is history. I've been a lot of volunteer work and a lot of um, you know small contracts and just being there and showing up and eventually I guess you stick around for long enough and they put you in charge.